Hello, welcome to Daily Devotion. We are going to talk about an exciting aspect of Christianity tonight, and that is the subject of deliverance. I can think of no more important of a subject than this because the promises of God are twofold that are really important to us. One is, is that we can be set free from the power of sin and that in that setting us free, it is a testimony within us that makes us know that we are the children of God because you cannot set yourself free from the power of sin. Secondly, it is to know that we have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord and then our affections transfer from this world to the world to come. And we no longer look at the things that are seen as that which is most important, but we look at the things that are unseen. And we learn to dominate our natural self, our carnal self, or our sinful nature. And we learn to dominate it by growing our uh, spiritual new man in Christ, new woman in Christ, whichever you may be, uh, this is what is called becoming a Christian. And I want to take us quickly to a verse of scripture that really points this out. And that one is, actually, uh, I got these out of order. So we're going to go to this one first. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 34 through 36. I love this. I think I brought this up recently in another broadcast, but this one is central to the uh, idea of deliverance. Jesus replied, he was talking to the Pharisees, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. There's nothing be that becomes more clear to a person who is a believer in Jesus Christ than to realize that our sinfulness is not something that we ought to do. We actually can't stop ourselves from it eventually. Sin gets a hold or a lock on us like a trap, and then it doesn't let us go. And that's what Jesus is saying. And he's talking to religious people who think they keep the law, think that they're children of Abraham, and because of that, they're children of God. And they are convinced that they are, if, if they're anything, they're not slaves of sin. But Jesus tells them, and he cuts right to their heart and says, no, no, no. If you sin, you are a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member, member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. F so if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Now that's what I want to talk about because the son setting us free is not just a theory. It is actually something that God wants to do in your life that makes a real difference in how you think. In other words, the way that you think before you come to Christ and the way you think after you come to Christ is more than the theory of how you look at things, but it's actually the change that takes place in a person's heart. The Bible is replete with understanding for this by giving us templates in the Old Testament. Uh, if you're talking to someone who is uh, fluent with theology, they'll call them shadows and types of the Old Testament. But today we might understand it better as templates because a template is something that you can use over and over again for different various purposes, but they are patterns. A template is a pattern that you can follow that always holds true to the pattern. And that's exactly what happened in the Old Testament when God showed the pattern of deliverance from enemies. When it comes to the children of Israel, they were brought into the land of Egypt because of a famine, and God sent Joseph ahead to Egypt so that he could be taken into a place of prominence, sort of the prime minister of Egypt, so that he could then in turn bring all of his father's clan or tribe into Egypt. And there God would use Egypt as the fertile ground in which to grow that little tribe of about 80 people into a, a mighty nation that would come out of Egypt strong enough to actually go into the promised land and become the uh, initial nation of Israel that God had envisioned way back in the time of Abraham. 
well, he envisioned it before that and before the world began, but he let it be known to Abraham in the covenant that he made with him. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so I, uh, I sit here and, uh, and, and I work on this stuff for hours and don't talk to anyone. Then when I start uh, doing this podcast or this broadcast, uh, it becomes uh, a problem with my voice. I'm always coughing at the beginning, so I apologize for that. Um, Jesus came along and he said, hey, I am bringing the power to break sin into a person's life if they are born again. To be a son means you have to be born again. To be born again means you have to have a new creature. You have to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You have to be born of the Spirit. In other words, you have to be produced by the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit or else you're not a child of God. Well, now the children of Israel, they were in the land of Egypt and they needed to be brought out of Egypt. God asked Pharaoh, to let his people go, and Pharaoh refused and in turn made them slaves. When they were made slaves, then God told Moses, I am going to deliver them with a mighty hand. What was obvious in that situation was, is they could not deliver themselves. They could not just walk away. And you and I are going to find this to be true in certain areas of our life all along the path as we live for God. We are going to find ourselves in places where we need deliverance and we need a mighty deliverance. In other words, we try and we try and we try to deliver ourselves and it doesn't work. And then we turn to God if we know that there is deliverance in God. Now that's the big question. I talk to a lot of young men, a lot of people that are struggling with sin, struggling with issues. Some are struggling in marriage, trying to make marriage work. Others are struggling with depression, trying to see their way out of the fog and the dimness of depression. Some are in the shadows of pornography and they are bound and chained by the addiction to pornography. There are many people that I'm dealing with right now that uh, uh, my main goal is to get them to understand that God has true deliverance for them if they would but believe Scripture. You've got to get yourself to the place to where you believe what God says and know that He is bound to it and that He doesn't mean it theoretically. He means it for real. And this is what Jesus was introducing here, that, that there was a real meaning behind being set free. That being set free free by God is truly being set free. Now, if you can set yourself free, you don't need God to do it. But when it comes to sin, you cannot set yourself free from all sin. You certainly can't set yourself free from your sinful nature that you were born with. So you need Jesus for that. But likely, there are things that have hooked themselves into you that you cannot free yourself from. And my message tonight is there is deliverance for the people of God. Let me take you back to the verse I showed you first that was the wrong one. And that's Numbers chapter 10 verse 9. Listen to what God says. Once he gets the children of Israel free from the land of Egypt by 10 mighty plagues, he brings them out and then he wants to take them into the land of Israel they called it the land of Canaan. It wasn't Israel yet. It was across the Jordan River. And God said, there's enemies in the land, but I'm going to give you the victory over those enemies. I want you to go in and conquer the land. This is parallel to us coming to God and him bringing us out of the world. A lot of people I've seen in my life who come from the world and come into Christ, a lot of stuff falls off of them. Uh, their, people come to God with immoral lives. Some of them are not even married. They're living together. They're uh, practicing sexual relations that are not acceptable to be done by Christians. And they come to God and immediately there's changes that take place. Many people come to God maybe who are alcoholics and or drug addicts and at the altar of giving their life to God or at the moment when they believe in Jesus' message of the gospel, they let go of those things. And in some cases, God delivers them from the Pharaoh that has the greatest hold on them. But even after those great deliverances, 
there is going to be another analogy take place that parallels with the Old Testament. The Old Testament shows that those people are delivered from Egypt and they're delivered from Pharaoh and they're taken toward the promised land. But once they get to the crossing of the promised land, they have to go in and conquer the enemy in order to possess the land. In Numbers 10, 9, look what it promised. And when you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and you shall be saved from your enemies. Those things that are in front of you are enemies and God is going to save you from them. But in some cases, he wants you to take the sword of the spirit and fight to destroy those enemies yourself. Now let's jump to Psalms 1837 and get a glimpse of what this looks like. The psalmist, David, says this, I chased my enemies and caught them, and I did not stop until they were conquered. So here is a great analogy or a template for us to follow from our lives in the New Testament. There are things in our life we're trying to conquer. We, it may be in our marriage. It may be to be a better parent with our children. It may be a better leader in the family to lead people to lead our family or others to God and, and through the walk of living for God. It may, to help, it may be for young or older men to help younger men to know that there is a relief from the, the, the dogged addiction of drugs or uh, pornography or worldliness or whatever uh, thing that is latched on to the young men and women that we're trying to help. Hopefully, we have our own testimony of the things that God has delivered us from that have no power over us anymore. I mean, I know people who have drank so heavily in their life, they live to drink. And in one moment, God delivered them. I know others who have been have struggled with drug addiction and went through years of trying to conquer it. And then eventually God gave them complete deliverance from drug addiction to where they won't even take an aspirin. I have seen this with my own eyes. I have seen many, many people delivered by the power of God to where you could take them to a drug factory and they wouldn't be tempted to take a drug. You could take them to a winery and they wouldn't be tempted to drink anything but water. This is the way God can deliver. And what I fear is that this next generation doesn't know that God uses his power to deliver us and to give us the ability to completely conquer our enemies. We have to go on the offense and we have to make up our minds that what God's word says is true and that he will help us to get this completely taken care of in our life to the point to where we have complete freedom in Christ. Victory, not theoretical victory, real deliverance from the power of it. You know the power of something when it grips you so badly you can't get your mind off of it. When God gives you deliverance, that power is broken. The power of Satan is broken. The power of your carnal nature is brought into control. You're never delivered from your nature, but you are given a power that's stronger than your nature, and you can control it. In other words, you, your land, the land of Israel was real land. Your land is your soul. Your land, the analogy, the template is your soul is what is to be conquered. It is all the dark areas of your life that God wants you to conquer and be victorious over. The enemy is your nature and it is Satan or his, his influence. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world. This is where our battle lies. Look at what Psalms 9.3 says. It says, my enemies retreated. They staggered and died when you appeared. See, this is God being involved in this process. You've got to give your 100%, but God is going to show up and help you. Look at Deuteronomy 33.29. It says, how blessed you are, O Israel. Who else is like you? A people saved by the Lord. He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Your enemies will cringe before you and you will stomp on their backs. 
This is no different than Jesus saying, I give you power over all the forces of the enemy. You will tread upon serpents. That's what this is talking about. This is the exact analogous scripture to what Jesus was preaching when he was here. He wanted to see people set free. He set people free and he brought complete healing, not only physically, but he brought healing spiritually to them as long as their faith reached out to him. In Joshua 21, 44, it says, And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all, look at that, underline it, all their enemies. What a fantastic promise. Do you think God just helped people in the Old Testament? No, not, not, not on your life. He helped all of them, and he's helping us today. I'm a living testimony of this. I know it. I believe it. I'm enthusiastic about it because it works. It is absolutely a surety. Leviticus 26, 6 and 7. I will give you peace in the land. Your land remembers your soul. It's your heart. I will give you peace in the land and you will be able to sleep with no cause of fear. No, you don't have to submit to depression. You don't have to submit to despair. You don't have to submit to sexual immorality. Or you don't have to submit to thoughts that run rampant through your, lo your life and your mind and drive you into despair and torment you. None of this is necessary because God offers deliverance. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. These are so analogous to what we fight today. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Remember, it's the word of God, the word of God that is your solution. Dig into it, get familiar with it. Deliverance is not a theory. It is a reality that God has the power to give you freedom so that you don't have to live in the dark. Do you believe in deliverance? I hope you do. I believe in it, and I want you to look for it if you don't have it yet. Israel did not go into their land and immediately conquer all their enemies. One at a time, God gave them uh, enemies to conquer. I want to end with this Psalm 118. I don't have time to do all of it because I'm out of time already. So I'm going to read a small portion of 118. And I just want to invite you, please do some homework. Go read the whole Psalm. Here's a portion. Uh, verse 10, all nations surrounded me and in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me surrounded me on all sides and in the name of the Lord I cut them off they surrounded me like bees they were uh, they went out like a fire among thorns and in the name of the Lord I cut them off I wish put I was pushed hard so that I was falling the new uh, living translation says my enemies tried their best to kill me but the Lord helped me or the Lord rescued me the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He has given me the victory, the New Living Translation says. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to the end, which is two verses I wanted to give you on the end of it. It's out of order, but it's so appropriate after you hear that. The first, verse five, out of my distress, I called on the Lord and the Lord answered me and he set me free. And the last one is the first verse. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Believe it, apply it, get to the word of God, make it a part of your daily life, and watch God take one promise at a time and make it yours. Thank you for watching. God bless.